Science fiction television has enjoyed a recent renaissance. The addictive intrigue of sci-fi shows means that when you're finished with one, you're left wanting more, more and more. Fortunately, Netflix has built a robust catalog of sci-fi shows to satiate your appetite. So check out some of the shows suggested by us when you're craving fantastic stories of science-based speculation. Welcome to Cinematic. Here we present to you the best sci-fi shows on Netflix. The first on this list, we have Altered Carbon. This high concept sci-fi action series based on the mind-bending novel by Richard K. Morgan requires both laser focus and suspension of disbelief to give into its trashy charms. How long have I been down? 250 years. If you tend to roll with a batshit sci-fi setups like this until they click, you'll stick around to see how it all ends and be pleased that you did so. Next, Black Mirror. Part satire and part prophecy, the series presents an appropriately grim view of the future, one that will definitely make you worry for the next generation and maybe even galvanize you into action. If we drill down into the numbers, you have got a solid popularity arc here. Binge this delicious platter of Peronia cautiously. And now next we have Dark. This mesmerizing series from the streaming platform is quite the mind bender, but that's not to say that it isn't still worth to watch. Schlue? Mit großen Augen und sagte Nichts ist umsonst. It fell into marketing that branded it as the new Stranger Things simply because of the missing person's presence and it's partially set in the 80s. But that cheap comparison undersells its legitimacy as a haunting and deeply watchable series. Next, The Innocents. You've got to help me. Where is she? Sci-fi and teen TV make for the perfect pair. Based on its grandiose concepts, partnered with already dramatic high-stakes love affairs. Next, Lost in Space. While not nearly as weird or fun as the classic 60s sci-fi TV series, it's based on even the enduring catchphrase. Danger Will Robinson has been sterilized. Netflix reimagining of Lost in Space is by no means a complete time suck. What is that? It's okay. Well, he's with me. Danger Will Robinson. It's the formula for a great adventure tale, the kind anchored by a sweet family that will bring you comfort when other sci-fi series overwhelm. Next, Love, Death and Robots. There's a certain artistry to making entertaining, effective and imaginative short films, and Netflix animated series Love, Death and Robots blends all three of those trends with some really crazy sci-fi stories. Come on, here. Try. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? You know, boing boing. No way. Stop being a whiny pussy and fucking bounce it. Please. Jeez, calm down your mother boy. It is a multifaceted collection of some of the most exhilarating and inventive storytelling out there. Next, The Magicians. The most fantasy fans grow up dreaming that one day they'll be whisked away to some sort of supernatural academy where they learn that they possess special abilities and are destined to hone their skills in a fantastical world that they never knew was real. The fate of the world is in your hands. But well, that's comforting. The series inhabits an imaginative world and documents all of the dangerous conflicts that loom within it. Next, Maniac. What sci-fi shows have you seen that feature a linear subplot? Justin Theorex as a scientist with overwhelming mommy issues and the killer 80s video game aesthetics? Probably not many until you have seen Maniac. What's wrong? It's just happens when I try to start cars. Owen, will you go to Salt Lake City with me? I don't technically have a driver's license. Next, Night Flyers. Ready to break orbit. Systems ready, sir. Been waiting my whole life for this. The confounding series proves to be very bingeable, even as you're watching a mission essentially meet a disturbing fate. Next, The OA. One of the most moving shows you'll ever watch. You have to pay close attention while watching it. Who are these people? But she's never seen us before. Seven years ago, when she went missing, 
she was blind. Mom? It's one of those shows that if you look away for a few minutes, you lose track of what's going on. It's a wonderful show. Now next, Osmosis. Tout le monde a une sœur. C'était écrit sur l'annonce et je me suis dit, même moi. Osmosis is a twisty, high-concept French sci-fi series that's like if a Black Mirror episode was expanded into an entire season of television. Next, The Rain. That's why I give you for it. Why are we persevering them? Focusing on a group of extremely emotional teens on a mission in a post-apocalyptic world, this dreary Scandinavian drama takes what's addicting about sci-fi and binge-worthy in teen TV to make for one wild adventure. Next, Raising Dion. Mister, I've got your doll. Dion! <gasps> this familiar feeling tale not only comes from a fresh perspective. The series dodges gender tropes and expectations to deliver a fun supernatural story with edge and purpose. Now next, Sense8. If you know what it means to be reborn, a Sense8. A what? The global adventure of a show comes from the Wachowski sisters of the Matrix fame, who intentionally wrote storylines revolving around identity politics, rarely represented in sci-fi into the script, making Sense8 one dynamic genre series. Next, Star Trek: The Next Generation. This is an interesting, thought-provoking, and most of all, entertaining series. Gene Roddenberry not only gave us a wagon train to the stars, but he gave us interesting stories reflecting the great values our society holds as truths. Perhaps one day, one day. Now next, Stranger Things. If you haven't binged Netflix's eighties paranormal throwback, what does it give? These are not nightmares. It's happening, and it all leads back to here. It's got everything: another dimension, insane monsters, Russian conspiracy plots, total bitching pop culture references, and the one-season mind-bender effect. Next, the society. The society blends anxious social politics into modern day by introducing us to a group of high school students who suddenly and inexplicably find themselves without parents, siblings, or anyone else at all, populating their small town. It's up to a bunch of high school students to form a pseudo government, make sure no one starts killing anyone else, and hopefully figure out what the hell is going on. Next, the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone still speaks volumes. Buckle up and fly into a dimension, not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Now next, the Umbrella Academy. Is that my skirt? Oh yeah, this. It's very breathy on the bits. Nice to see nothing's changed. You'll come for the explosions and time travel and chimpanzee butler, but you'll stay for the oddly affecting portrayal of how sibling relationships grow and powerfully shape each other, for better or for worse. Next, three percent. If you relish the dystopian drama of the Hundred, the Hunger Games, or other narratives about attractive people living under unattractive regimes, then this Brazilian Netflix original is for you. Next, the Hundred. No, no, it's not my time. Pull out your arm. No, no, please, just, just check my file. You'll see. You're, you're early. You'll see that. How many post-apocalyptic shows starring attractive young people do we really need? Apparently, one more. The Hundred. Don't let the show's soapy veneer fool you. This is dark, thoughtful material in a sleek, teen-friendly package. And now next, the 4400. Accelerate it again. The comet cannot change course. This one has. But it's not a comet. If you want to make a good sci-fi show, put a number in the title. Apparently. If you like this video, then do share it with all your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more such upcoming amazing videos.